so in the today's session i am explaining uh, the reflection of plane wave using huygens principle so to start with this uh, uh, reflection of plane wave using huygens principle i am explaining reflection of plane wave not refraction of plane wave so because of this reason i am taking uh, xy reflecting surface not a refracting surface or xy is not an interface or boundary xy is a reflecting surface and assume that uh, a plane wave is now falling on a xy reflecting surface so because of this angle this plane wave is now moving towards a reflecting surface and with certain angle it is not parallel to xy reflecting surface because of this angle its one end is already touched the xy reflecting surface whereas its other end is away from the reflecting surface by certain distance so we have to indicate this uh, plane wave as incident plane wave and the speed of the light wave is v now we have to indicate the direction also by the help of two arrow arrows so these arrow marks indicating the direction in which the incident plane wave is um, propagating then we have to mark this one end as a other end as b and this is a c end so the b end is away from the reflecting surface by a distance bc now we have to calculate this distance bc for that we have to assume that this incident plane wave its b end initially moves from b to c and we have to measure how much time it will take to travel from b to c before that uh, uh, draw one vertical line at point a this vertical line is called normal to the reflecting surface xy with a, and this is a angle made by the the direction of uh, incident plane wave with normal this is called angle of incidence now take uh, this b end is now moving towards xy reflecting surface it has taken i will i repeat this uh, animation you can observe here its b end is now moving towards xy reflecting surface and after that once it reaches the point c it will show how much time it has taken you can observe here so this is how it moved from b to c it has taken t seconds to travel from b to c so distance equal to speed multiplied by time the speed is v with this speed only it is traveling from b to c so if you multiply speed with time duration then you get distance bc it is equal to vt now we, now we have to take this end a end a is end is already touched the reflecting surface it is not entering into the reflecting surface because of the uh, reflecting surface this a end of the incident plane wave where it will now reflect back into the same medium so now in which direction in which direction this incident plane wave i mean the a end of this incident plane wave will reflect from this uh, xy reflecting surface if you just observe the animation this is how it is uh, moving it is now reflecting back from the xy reflecting surface so this a end of the incident plane wave it has now moved the same distance because both end a and b end both are uh, moving in the same medium and both are uh, moving with the same speed v and uh, we have to take the same time duration so the distance uh, obviously it is same whatever distance it has covered from b to c the same dist distance it, it is going to cover from the point a now we have to measure this uh, distance here we have already measured it we have already calculated that distance vt so the same distance is going to cover from the point a then with this distance distance vt we have to take it as a radius and point a as a center distance vt we have to take it as a radius a as a center draw one sphere around the point a like this 
then after drawing the sphere around the point A, then you have to draw the tangent from the point C so that it touch the sphere at point E. Now this CE will be called as refracted plane view. And this is the direction of refracted plane view. This is the direction of incident plane view. And this one is a direction of refracted plane view. Now we have to indicate the angle of reflection. So this is the direction in which the reflected plane view is traveling. So this is the direction of reflected plane view. And this is the uh, normal. The angle between the direction of reflected plane view and normal will be called as angle of reflection. Then if this is the angle of incidence, then BAC must be equal to angle of incidence and angle ACB, sorry, ACE must be equals to angle of reflection. So this is a I means angle of incidence, R means angle of reflection. Now using the Huygens principle, uh, we have to prove that I must be equal to R. We, we, using Huygens principle only, we have constructed incident plane wave and reflected plane wave. So as we know that Huygens principle is a geometrical construction. So geometrical construction means while constructing uh, the reflected plane wave and incident plane wave, so we got two triangles. One is ABC, another one is AEC. And we have already marked angle BAC as angle of incidence I and ACE as an angle of reflection. So now with the help of geometry, we have to prove that I must be equal to R. So these two triangles, just observe the triangles ABC and AEC both are sitting on the same uh, base AC. Both triangles ABC and AEC. So both triangles are sharing common base. And you can observe here this angle is 90 degree. Angle AEC equal to 90 degree. Angle ABC is also equals to 90 degree. Two triangles having same side and two triangles are having same angles then the remaining two angles must be equal a b a c must be equal to e c a so angle of incidence must be equal to angle of reflection so this is nothing but the law of reflection this is how we have to prove the reflection law or you have to explain the reflection of plane wave using the Huygens principle. So you have to write one conclusion here. Triangle EAC and BAC. Angle EAC and angle BAC. BAC. So both are congruent and therefore the angle and I and R equal. If I and R are equal, which means that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. This is nothing but the law of reflection. In the examination, we have to draw on this diagram. There is no need to uh, show this entire sphere. We have to show only a part of sphere above the XY reflecting surface. Then you have to indicate all these angles I, R and you have to indicate uh, the incident plane wave and reflected plane wave and you have to uh, you have to show the triangles ABC and AEC as a congruent angles and uh, afterwards so you have to write one conclusion that uh, triangle EAC and triangle BAC are congruent therefore angle I is must be equal to R angle I and angle R they are equal means angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection this is nothing but the law of reflection